Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hi there. Doing pretty good. You're traveling? Yes, I am. It's been uh, pretty exciting. Some some great things have happened, and uh, we're we're here in uh, Huntsville uh, with with mm -hmm. Steve Conlon, and we're we're waiting for the Space Center to make some time for us so that we can talk about that big dish. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, th th hey, thanks for showing up, and uh, let's let's go ahead and and uh, and hear about what you've done and what you're planning on, and, and yeah. if you have any roadblocks. Um, so. Uh, I did code for FPGA uh, GS encoder, uh, submitted, uh, sent it to Andre Suoto for review, and he has got he has given some really good comments and helped me. So I'm addressing those comments. Uh, there is a there is a some change in uh, approach how I am streaming the packets. So uh, I'm doing that change, and hopefully it should be done maybe today or tomorrow, uh, and then I will start with the testing of. I will start writing the test case for it. We will take it from there. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Anything slowing you down or stopping you or anything I can no. help with? It's all good, all good. Wow, no, it sounds exciting. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I look forward to hearing about the uh, about the stream, um, the streaming change. That, that can be yes. uh, it's pretty cool. I'm uh, looking forward to, to hearing more about that. Yeah. Cool, okay, I'll tell you what I've been up to. Um, <clears throat> so my, my goal is to get the hardware, get things running on hardware as quickly as possible. And so um, this is means remoting into the San Diego lab PC and that's where VMs are running on this pretty powerful PC. Um, and, and then the boards are connected to that particular computer. Um, and if you read through pound FPGA, you can see it's, it's real close, um, but we're not, not quite there yet. The hardware server appears to be up and running some of it seems to be working, but running the application on the zinc and running, uh, getting the, the bit streams loaded hasn't worked yet. So lots of things are working and, and the hardware running uh, will happen. Um, on, the, on just the learning how to do better FPGA design again after quite a while of not doing it, I can make, pro make projects, I understand sort of the modern workflow. Um, I can make things on the programmable logic and I can connect them to the, the processor system. And that can, that's kind of a big step forward. Um, wow, the IDE has really improved. Um, and so that's, that's coming along really well. So until, I think we'll, we'll probably stop trying to uh, fight the, um, the remote for now. I'm gonna call in some help over the next uh, week or so, or maybe when I get back on the 7th of July. Um, but I'm, I think what I'll focus on is, is maybe more um, simulation. So, so getting things, uh, just continue to learning and working with the, the code bases that we have and, and write some stuff to, to kind of come up to speed. So the, another roadblock is that the new platform project in Vivado isn't working for me for some reason. That seems to be a separate problem and that's shared mm -hmm. by other people littered across the land. So uh, that's probably some sort of local, local problem and not, uh, and not a mm -hmm. remote related problem. So that's it for me. Um, okay. if, I, if I can, um, sorry, I'm just a bit late, but um, with the various versions of Vivado, Bitis, and Bitis HLS, I mean, it's fluid even within the Solix universe. But uh, uh, if, if, uh, if you're having issues in building a tool chain, uh, depends upon which version you started off from, because they change from version to version, what they're doing under the need. Yeah. Uh, I I suspect that this is probably a, um, a a virtual machine issue with connecting the hardware and not a tool flow. The tool seems to be behaving really well and everything expected there. I, I think that the root cause is probably the Unraid server running a VM. And even though we mapped the USB drive, you know, we mapped the USB cr uh, connection over correctly, that there's something um, subtle, uh, something that we've missed. So I think we're gonna back up and uh, use Aperture instead of Chonk so that we're removing the Unraid server and removing the, that tricky, you know, trickier and more sophisticated v virtual machine yeah. and then trying to remote in without Unraid. And if that uh, works yeah. as expected, then we'll have a lot more, we'll have a clue. Uh, so we're okay. just gonna keep marching along and do it. The tool flow though, for the versions of Vivado that we're using seems to be behaving uh, pretty well. So I, I wouldn't put that, uh, uh, first, I, I think I'd, I'm I'm more inclined to blame the virtual machine and Unraid before um, the particular version of Avada. 
is there is there a read me about where um, the fundamentals are defined? I mean, you've developed this this framework, uh, Chunk. I haven't heard of before, or Unraid. I haven't perhaps heard before because I use real machines. You know, because I like real machines, like you know, an Ubuntu machine. You know, that's really an Ubuntu, not a BF. But I'm just wondering, uh, uh, are these other uh, uh, frameworks necessary for your work, or they just happen to be what was in use? Yeah, this is all related to the remote labs. So in order to use the uh, expensive uh, evaluation boards, in order to be able to use the trends gear, uh, in order to be able to bring up the boards that we eventually will create, since okay. that's done remotely, all of this stuff has to be sorted out, and the sooner the better. Uh, okay. So, so in order to use the remote labs, that this sort of stuff has to be shaken out. So we've we've come a long way in a short time. It would have been great if the hardware just worked and I was able to remotely run a bitstream, uh, but that didn't happen today. Um, and you know, with the work that we're doing, it may happen tomorrow or it may take another couple of days. So right. I'm, I'm, this, is, I'm just this is in order to use all the expensive gear in the remote lab. That you know, you can also oh, yeah. use your. You can also do something locally, and then ship the bitstream in, and have somebody no. run it for you in in remote labs. Since we're on site, usually. Right. I'm. I'm just asking because that's usually what I do. I mean, I've done remote labs, remote hardware setups forever, and I've never actually used anything other than just the basic Unix. That's it. That's what we're using. It's Linux. The Unraid is just a way to to run virtual machines. So it's it's running uh, Ubuntu at, on the on the lab PC. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. You. It's a if you want to learn more, it's all under remote labs in uh, in documents at Phase Four Ground uh, repo. So I'll yeah, I haven't the, actually visited that section. I was just focusing on just uh, trying to. Uh, okay, but the the FPGA thread that I was just having a discussion last night. I realized that, okay, I'm gonna to shift to the Unix environment and just, you know, just dump everything there because the that's file names are. Yeah, yeah uh, that's, that's totally good. That's, yeah. that's a reasonable way to do it. So, you know, and you can get the same repositories and the same code base. You don't have to use remote labs. Just when you come to the point where you wanna run it on hardware, if you don't have the, um, you know, the expensive dev boards or the target, uh, we do, and, and so, Hopefully, by the time you have to use it, it's uh, we'll be have worked out all of this, these uh, issues. Sounds okay. like you're having a ripping week. Is there anything that I can help with that's in your way, or roadblocks, or anything? Well, that the roadblocks are our are, are first capital for uh, buying all these. I mean, you know, sitting about a uh, okay. We've got a pick. We picked up a thermal vac chamber, 18 inches by 24 inches in diameter. Uh, the pump will be down to. If we pay for the service of the pump, then it'll be down to 10 mic, uh, 10, um, 10 millitors, 10 millitors, 0 0.010 tor, um, if, without any turbo machinery. That pump will, will actually work. So we, we could get early vacuum tests for anybody. Wow, really. that's cool. The question is, is anybody else wanting a vacuum test? Then let us know so we okay. can configure it appropriately for you know first round of testing. We don't want to do the propulsion testing right away because it'll, it'll contaminate the chamber. We just need some experience with it. We want to do it in the air before we do it in the vacuum. But once we do it, then the chamber will be coated. We have to decide on the mitigation system for coating. Okay. Um, and then after, after that, that, that's the only thing you can use it for. Is that the, is that right, the, but the pump machine can be, the pump machine can be switched over to another chamber. Okay. That's interesting. So, so the question is, the, do, is, is our priority going to be battery testing? Why do, we need, why do we get some experience with battery testing first? You know, give us your batteries that you selected, send it to us, and yeah. let's vacuum yeah. test it and, and get it you know, up to high TRL. Okay. And then do some air testing. But That sounds like a ton of stuff going on. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit more then. Uh, I'll be back in San Diego on the 7th of July. And I, sh yeah. I have a little bit yeah. of time in between here, here, between today and then. Yeah, we'll just keep asking and we'll keep looking and digging and, and seeing seeing what we can accomplish and, and we'll just keep at it. So so if you if you later find some time after seventh, uh, could you just have a just a follow up meeting in general yes. about like what the yes. process would be to apply for support? Okay. Yeah. So we're okay with that. Yeah, yeah. That'll I'm probably be after the, that'll be after the seventh. Yeah, please, please. And yeah. um FPGA uh, work, uh, you know, I was re trying to read the documentation out and that's where I found that 
file name issue. I'll, I now I understand that it. it's okay. I mean, I'm, okay, I'm, good. I'm good with both, both environments. Andre Swato reports the things that he's done in the past week are read the GSE protocol spec to help Anshul, fix a combinatorial loop issue caused by a change on FPGA underscore cores, AXI stream replicate module. And he worked with the polybase filter to possibly convert it to VHDL so that we can run a full sim on GHDL. All right. All right. Great to hear from you. Anshul. More soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.